Hello, my name is Rob Pirelli. I'm with Corning. I'm here today with Mike Falls and Will Ruffin with Vision Technologies, and our topic today is wireless mobility. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, Rob. How are you? Hey, Rob. Hello. Um, so, first topic. So, Vision, when you guys first started, you guys weren't not into mobility and wireless. So, how did you get into it, and why did you get into into mobility? So, as you stated, Vision started as a traditional cabling company, vertical and horizontal infrastructure. But we were servicing several technologies, AV technology, security technology, as well as cellular DAS. Uh, so the natural progression being an IP convergence based company and wanting those technologies in-house to better serve our clients, it made sense for us to get into technologies that better served our clients that we could offer a full suite of products. That's great. That's great. So what markets do you serve? Currently, uh, most of the markets that we are doing most of our business in, Rob, is in the enterprise space uh, for enterprise DAS. Uh, but that is consists of different market segments uh, from healthcare um, to uh, federal work um, and public safety as well. That's great. So why would you choose those markets? Well, we, we kind of have a broad offering. We, we try to kind of be one to everybody, but um, we, we've kind of discovered over the course of time uh, certain markets that were much more um, uh, in need of our services. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say probably today healthcare and the federal markets are probably our most uh, sought after services. Okay, great. So there's a lot of companies out there that, that offer DAS as, as, as some of their offerings. So what sets you guys apart from um, everybody else? Well, I think what sets Vision apart is we're not just DAS. Uh, we have a full suite of offerings from Wi-Fi, CBRS, cellular DAS, public safety DAS, but we also have an enormous team behind us offering the infrastructure services, cabling, traditional cabling. Um, and not all DAS companies do that. A lot of DAS companies are just parts and smarts. We have a full suite of teams that handle all aspects of the entire installation from concept, RF benchmark surveys, through the installation, integration, commissioning, and carrier coordination. It's hard to find a company with visions, capabilities, financial strength, and background that have that full suite of offerings under one roof and self-perform every aspect. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So speaking of offerings, uh, I know you guys offer Wi-Fi as, as one of your services. And, right. and what I hear from the enterprise is, um, you know, I, I've got Wi-Fi. I've got an in-building issue, but I've got Wi-Fi. So why don't I just use Wi-Fi to, to solve my in-building cellular needs? So what's your approach when, when customers offer that as, a, as an alternate to, to do voice over Wi-Fi versus uh, using a DAS? We have seen customers that do choose voice over Wi-Fi, um, but it's really as augmentation, not to replace cellular services. Uh, keeping in mind that Wi-Fi is based on Ethernet, which is all contention-based. So if you want to contend with everybody else that's on that Wi-Fi, be it data packets and putting voice on a data infrastructure, that's the quality that you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Versus the way that packets are handled for voice is very different in how the carriers treat voice packets and how our DAS treat voice packets. So you get that better quality of service, better transition from indoors to outdoors, and all the aspects that go with the services that we've become accustomed to of being able to pick up your phone and make a call, stay connected on that call throughout the building as I transition into a parking garage and outside onto the macro network. You just don't get that same quality with Wi-Fi networks. We do a lot of Wi-Fi, it's traditionally data infrastructure. Okay, so so put in a DAS, is, it sounds like that's the most reliable thing to do. Oh, absolutely. Uh, to be able to, to solve for the future, so. Um, and I know a lot of enterprises, they, they thought that way early on. And um, as you talk to the enterprise that maybe put a system in five, eight years ago, what advice would you give somebody that, that put in a DAS that long ago? Um, you know, what should they do as they look forward? Buy a new one. Buy a new one. Buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the technology curve is uh, for DAS is, is similar to any other, although I will say that, you know, originally for a long time, 4G was, if you got a 4G DAS, you were pretty much, uh, you know, comfortable. There weren't really a lot of changes that were coming about. Uh, over, over the last 12 to 24 months, however, that's changed drastically. Uh, I'm sure everybody's heard about 5G, which, of, of course, uh, 
In our industry, we like to affectionately refer to 5G as fake G, uh, particularly for in-building services, you know, 5G new radio, uh, some people call it, uh, or, or C-band is what it really seems like it's going to be. But anyone who has a DAS that's more than four or five years old is, is probably going to find that they're not uh, ready and capable to serve their customers' needs and also the services that the carriers are going to be offering now coming up uh, with all the new technology available, with all the services uh, that are needed for everyone to operate their their enterprise uh, there's a huge demand uh, for them for the, the the latest and greatest which of course corning is is ready and well suited to to provide yeah i think that's a great point will i think you know the advice we can give to those clients is to be ready for future technologies and the only guarantee you're going to get that is a fiber deep infrastructure um, we always um, pull enough fiber to the edge to have spares of course and those spares can also be used for future technologies uh, right now, carriers are not putting in millimeter wave into enterprise office space. You're not going to have millimeter wave 5G, the you know bandwidth rich experience that you get in the Apple or the Verizon store. You're not going to have in your office. It's just not feasible. Mm -hmm. It's not cost effective yet. But you want your infrastructure to be ready to support that. Okay, that sounds like some great insight, and sounds like you guys have some some great capabilities. So, um, so so looking in the past, can you give me some examples of where you guys have been successful as you've deployed these systems? Well, again, most of our work is in the enterprise space. Uh, um, you know, cellular has uh, proliferated quite deeply in both um, commercial spaces, but also in government. Uh, we're fortunate enough to to be the um, proud to serve the United States Senate in the deployment of a state-of-the-art cellular DAS to support their customers and their enterprise. Uh, what's great about that is uh, that the Senate has decided that what's very important to them is to have a future-proof network, which includes uh, a fiber optic capability uh, to the edge uh, to offer the latest and uh, future uh, carrier frequencies. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate the time today. Uh, some great insight. I appreciate you both joining. and. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, mm -hmm. Rob.